In this video, we're going to find the plastic liner hidden in each one of these containers, learn about whether this is even a problem from a health and environmental perspective, and look into plastic-free alternatives that you can use every day. Here are the timestamps if you'd like to skip around. If you're new to the channel, welcome. So if you're on the same corners of the internet as I am, you've probably seen a video where something like this aluminum Coke can is dissolved and you can actually see the plastic liner on the inside. Thing is, this kind of paper cup also has a plastic liner. And next time you go to somewhere like a Subway or a Jersey Mike's that has this kind of cup, look inside it and you'll notice that when you have a light reflecting off of it, like from the sun or from an overhead light, it's just a lot shinier than regular paper. That's because there's a layer of plastic on the inside. And this is an aluminum bottle you've probably heard of before from the company SIG. It's a really well-known brand and company. It also has a plastic liner on the inside. If you've ever seen the series on TV, How It's Made, they have an entire segment about how these are manufactured. And you can actually see the part in the manufacturing process where a nozzle is stuck into the bottle and they spray a very fine mist of plastic and then they heat it up a little bit to harden it. So what we're gonna do is add some drain cleaner which has sodium hydroxide it's a very powerful base and it cuts through the aluminum this aluminum on the sig bottle is a lot thicker so i honestly don't know what to expect there but we're going to do it anyways and see what happens so the first thing we're going to do is take a bit of sandpaper and actually rough up the outsides of each one of these containers because in the videos i've seen like with this aluminum can in particular it really helps corrode it and break it down more quickly and i'm only going to sand down half of the coca-cola bottle because i'm curious how much that paint actually resists that corrosion all right so we've got it halfway sanded off pretty well and the other half is basically just normal Right after adding the drain cleaner, the paper cup is not doing anything. This is expected because it won't have the same kind of chemical reaction as the aluminum. And I'm really just trying to saturate the paper over time to be able to peel it away later. The soda can is already starting to bubble some, but it will take some time to really get going. The SIG bottle isn't doing anything yet, and that's mainly because the aluminum is anodized, which is a process that makes a very thin outer layer of the aluminum corrosion resistant without having to rely on a plastic liner or paint. I checked again at 30 minutes and the paper cup is starting to look saturated, but there's still not much to look at there. The soda can is reacting a lot at this point and there are bubbles billowing off of the can. Reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the drain cleaner and the aluminum releases hydrogen gas, which are the bubbles that you're seeing here. Sig bottle doesn't appear at this point to be reacting much at all, but if you look very closely, you can actually see some bubbles at the base of the bottle. It's not much to look at yet, but give it time and you'll see how that slow eats away at the bottle. At 60 minutes, the paper cup is really saturated, but it still has a ways to go. The aluminum can is pretty much completely dissolved where it was sanded, and the SIG bottle looks almost the same as before. I waited until 90 minutes to really start inspecting the soda can, and you can see the folds in the plastic here when I press against it. And because I only dissolved half of the can, the plastic liner tore really easily right at the edge of the aluminum, and I actually had an accident and spilled the soda everywhere. After that, you could easily see the plastic liner and it was really easy to tear apart and remove. The paper cup and SIG bottle still had a ways to go so I put them back in the drain cleaner and left them overnight. One day later not much had changed and I wasn't sure how much we'd be able to see from the cup and the bottle in this experiment. But after four days the paper had broken down and loosened enough from the plastic liner that I was able to peel it away pretty easily. After that it was really easy to see that plastic liner on the inside. It was surprisingly strong too holding up to a lot more abuse than the soda can liner. Then I checked the SIG bottle and by then it had started noticeably dissolving in a few spots around the bottom edge. I'm not entirely sure why the corrosion was focused here because my understanding is that these bottles are made by extruding a single solid aluminum puck. And I would have imagined that the anodizing process would have covered the entire outside of the bottle. But if you know more about why it corroded more on the bottom, let me know what you think in the comments. I let it sit another three days and by day seven, two spots had dissolved enough that 
you could actually see through the entire bottle. It was also dissolved to a point that I was easily able to pry the bottom open, and that gives you a much better look at that plastic liner. The brownish gold color that you see on the inside, that's the plastic. At first, it looks like there's a second plastic liner on the outside, but when that outer layer had dried some, it became apparent that was actually just the thin layer of anodized aluminum. In the end, I was able to get a good look at the plastic liner on the cup, the can, and the bottle. But the question is, is that even worth worrying about? And what are some good alternatives that avoid plastic liners entirely? Stay tuned to find out. So now you've seen the hidden plastic liner in all three of these containers, and it's a practical and inexpensive way for manufacturers to offer drinks. But the question is, is it safe? This is where it starts to get a little murky. It's worth noting that all of the plastic liners you've seen in this video are classified as food safe. But the thing is, plastic containers have a long, troubled history with our health, and it usually relates to growing research over time about certain chemicals that we've used in plastics for decades, but then we eventually find out they can have negative effects effects on your health. EPAs and phthalates were all in the news in the late 2000s because of their effects on hormone regulation in your body. That's what fueled the public's transition away from reusable plastic bottles like Nalgene's to stainless steel ones like clean canteens. Interestingly, SIG was a haven at first for many Nalgene refugees. Then it came out that the company had used misleading marketing that had made many loyal customers believe it was BPA free when in fact it wasn't. And they only changed their formulation around 2000 2008 after a lot of public backlash. More recently, the spotlight is on PFAS and microplastics. PFAS usually deals more with nonstick coatings like Teflon. It isn't as relevant for bottles as far as I've read. You'd actually be more likely to have PFAS in your water supply, and you can see my deep dive into that topic in this other video. Microplastics, on the other hand, are almost definitely a problem with any one of these containers because just think about what happens when you throw it away. The paper will probably dissolve relatively quickly, while the aluminum will take take much longer to corrode, but either way you still have a plastic liner. I suspect that plastic will eventually break down into smaller and smaller pieces, which is basically the definition of microplastics. Multiply that by every restaurant, gas station, and all the other places that you find these disposable cups and cans, and that's a lot of plastic being thrown away in containers that most people think are plastic free. So what can you do? Well the good news is there are a few options for reusable bottles that do not have a plastic liner. So let's take a look at a few in part three. Now, it's impossible to completely avoid plastic contact with your water because so much of our public water supply is moved through plastic pipes. But if you're one of those people who understandably wants to control what you can and avoid using paper cups and aluminum cans that could contribute to the growing microplastic problem, consider going with a reusable stainless steel or glass bottle. No stainless steel bottles I'm aware of have a plastic liner. So going with popular brands like Owala, Yeti, Stanley, or Hydro Flask is a great option. Unless you have a nickel allergy, it's a really safe bet. And if you get something like an Owala with a straw, consider swapping out the standard plastic straw for a stainless steel one. Glass does not contain plastic at all. There are a bunch of those to choose from, including Life Factory, Ello, and w and Porter. One interesting option that I found about recently is just one bottle, which has a glass bottle that goes inside an insulated stainless steel one. So you can drink from glass while having vacuum insulation. If you really want to go all out, you could also look for a bottle with stainless steel under the lid. Some of the better options I've seen with Stainless steel bottles include Healthy Human, Eco Vessel, some clean canteen bottles, and Hydra Flask with their stainless steel lid that's sold separately. For glass, one I've seen for a while is Mayu, but it looks like there are a lot more comparable options on Amazon now. I'll leave a link to some of these bottles as well as our best bottle calculator in the description. You can rank different criteria like easiest to clean or most durable, and then the calculator will recommend the best fit for you. As of today, it doesn't have a ranking criteria for avoiding plastic, but I am planning to add that when I finish an upcoming video about the safest water bottle materials. And as always, remember to clean your bottles regularly. All of these potential health issues with plastic pale in comparison to the health risks with having a dirty water bottle that has not been cleaned for a long time and has bacteria and mold buildup. I'll leave a link to a video with our recommended cleaning schedule in the description. Hope this helps and happy hydrating.